Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host Jake. Today I'm joined by Ben from Northern TCG. Long starter. And Logan. Hello. <laughs> How was our week in Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's start with you, Ben. Uh, I have committed myself to uh, an eternal life of never winning locals. I've decided that as long as I play Tenpai, I will always lose one match in a night. Everyone's going to side so much hate against me that it's just going to be the case. I will never win locals playing this deck. You weren't the only person playing Tenpai tonight, though, were you? No, now everyone else has picked it up, and it's just going to make it even worse for me. Um, so, you know, I might build Sneak Eyes and just, like, have that ready to go so I can shuffle locals and be like, oh, Sneak Eyes now. <laughs> um, but outside of that, yeah, so Tuesday, win X1. Uh, lost. What the fuck did I lose to? Something. Was it me? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? Did you lose the chat? No, that was last week. Mm. Um, today I also Tuesday. lost the chat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, then today I went X2. That was bad. My first loss, or both my losses, were me, to me just fundamentally just being stupid with four O's. Um, so yeah, week was eh. But it is what it is. I just need to, you know, actually know how to play my deck. Uh, semantics. Just learn on the fly. Yeah. Just, you know, not forget very basic interactions that I've always known. When you have the options of adding talents and stealing their monster or adding impermanence and then impermanencing the monster and then preparation dripping your hand, always take the impermanence and just use it. Just use it. Hot tip. Logan. Yeah. Uh, what have I done? I went X1 on Tuesday, um, playing a bit of Lights on Centurion build. Um, yeah, kind of do a bit different to Jesse Cotton's build, but kind of same premise. It's the um, same. No, nah, it's got a few different things, but like What's the, the import, difference? The important stuff is the same. We're playing more Horus package. We're playing more Thunder cards. We've cut down on our um, Lightspawn cards. We increase the Centurion numbers. Um, so we're you're playing, not playing Lightspawn. We are playing Lightspawn. We're you're playing, playing Centurion with a Lightspawn package. Well, yeah, because that's the best way to play Centurion. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, sorry, but yeah. Uh, we went X1, and then today we went X1 again. We lost in the finals. Um, yeah, I mean, D shift is a good card. Um, I was card you were complaining about. Ogre's, that, a, Ogre's a good card too when you draw mm. it. it uh, if only the shift was live so the Ogre couldn't be used. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was unfortunate. I was really happy with the deck. Um, yeah, I was, I'm really happy with it. But he doesn't know what King Sark does, by the way. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, I didn't read it. No. The card is very good if you read it. I don't want to read it. Don't read cards. Opponent Book of Moons is Horus. He's like, I've got no other Horus monsters that can get over this Colossus. No, I don't anyway. get over. I, I killed it anyway. I already killed the Colossus. No, the other... You know how he still had the Colossus there? After you went to attack into it with the... But didn't I kill it straight after anyway? Uh, you had to do other stuff in main phase 2 to remove it. Mm. No, I didn't read it. Anyway, uh, read King Sark. Do yourself a favour. Yeah, really. uh, Sark deals with a lot of problems. Yeah, the Ascend, yeah. Yeah, you just could have done that instead. But didn't I attack his other monsters anyway? You attacked one I already attacked stuff. with the other two. No, you attacked one into this middle monster, and then you attacked yeah, with no, the no. second monster into the Horus, got booked, and then you were like, I don't have enough attack to get over this Colossus anymore. The reality is, we lost anyway. Um, Jake, how about you? How did you go? Yeah. Um, I kind of just slapped the deck together. I really should do research on what the better builds are. Um, it may even be that I just pivot entirely away from the Light Sworn and just do more tier stuff. Um, but I knew going into today that the deck still wasn't right, so it's like, eh. Um, I did have a bonkers uh, game against Runic in that I just had five set spell and traps for disruption as well as like the rest of the board. So that was real. That was real nice. I like that. So you think you're going more to like pure tier, pure tier, instead of like lights on tier? Yeah. Is that because you think the lights ones are like not doing it's enough? It's situational. For you, so sometimes the light swarms can go off and they really complement what you're trying to do. Mm. Other times you open a wolf of Elise and nothing to do with them. I think so, he did that against me. He did that against me too. I did that against him too in game one. Did he at least try to play? Mm, didn't get a chance to. Against me, he just scooped. He's my next game. Well, against him, I had to wait for the top deck. Against you, uh, yeah. I was going first. Ah, uh, yeah. I remember when I drew before Felicity and you and I set past and I was like, this is fine. <laughs> it was not. Yeah, I think, it, was a, it was a tactics. Yeah. I think you're right though. I think, it was, I think particularly with the tier elements, like if you're playing a heavy tier build, 
the last ones can really conflict a lot because you've already got to play like the traps and all that. Did he just confess to setting a wolf or setting a police? No, no, no. He, he set a tactics. Um, I believe he set a card in the thought that I would waste resources to out it. Uh, but no. uh, Triple P deals with it very nicely without having to commit anything to. Um, my, my name was Garbage. I was just saying it to say like, oh, yeah, it could be. Or maybe I've, maybe I've blindsided you. Maybe it's not lights when you see. No. Um, I, I fucking know you. I know what you play. <laughs> exactly. It. Um, yeah, I think I think you're right though. Like the last ones, I don't think tier lights one. If you're gonna go heavy tier, is the way to go. I think if you're gonna play lights on tier build, you need to go light and tier element cards. My list just has three the three names. That's it. yeah. Well, his list has got like all the. There's a whole bunch of shit I could do. That's the thing about mill decks is there's any number of different ratios you can do to oh, build totally. different boards. So I need to work out what I want to do. But it's gonna take me some time. In the meantime, we have Nats coming up in. Oh, sorry, states. States coming up in like two weeks, and I have no idea what the fuck I'm gonna play. Um, it likely won't be this, so you want to play I need... snake eyes. No, absolutely like not. You can, use, you can use my snake eyes. I don't use my snake eyes. I do want. not want them. I do not care for them. They can get in the bin. Voiceless voice, good deck. Don't have it, but sure. I'm surprised you don't have a voiceless voice. It's such a you sort of style. The fuck? Like it just feels like I'm versing someone who's played like OG invoked. And just making like a I mechabar. I you're gonna make a mechabar reference. It has nothing. No. Like it just feels like a you thing. That no. was him last week. He right. was just making mechabar. No, he wasn't that. just making he, mechabar. He like, is how the fuck dare you? <laughs> how fucking dare you slap a fucking fire dragon on the board thinking you're unique? Shut your fucking motherfucking face. But did I normal summon the fire dragon? Depends. Did you need to worry about disruption? Thirty-three percent of the time, I would normal summon the fire dragon. <laughs> so, hot take on uh, Tempai is it's just budget uh, Neuron. It's better than Numeron. Numeron. It's better than Numeron. It's, yeah, it's budget. That's why it's better. Is budget it budget Neuron. Tron Dragon? You don't have to play that. You, you don't have to win either, but you should you, play Tron Dragon and win. You absolutely yeah, you don't. You don't need to. You don't need to. It's you in there as bait. 100%. It's in there as bait. Yeah. You do not need to play it. You, you don't put out to. more than enough damage without it. For sure, but there are definitely situations where that because cards going to come up and win you a game. Where if sure. you don't have it, you're not going to win. Yeah, there's a lot there's of cards you can say that for. Prosperity well. and mm. didn't have enough damage after it. Exactly. Yeah, but <coughs> even and then, you have you, to open the field spell. Well, for you're it still, to I would still be say it's is Neuron that expensive back in the day? It's, for its time, absolutely it was. There was like a, tw- a three, four week period where it was quite expensive. Yeah, when people thought this was the best. Thing on when it. it came out, it was shit. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, wait, this is good for a little bit. Anyway. Mm-hmm. anyway. Back to you, Jay. Especially because um, Zexal was still a thing. So if you made them go first, they just go, ha ha, no time. Because yeah. you got one summon afterwards, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Zexal. Yeah. And then when Zexal got banned, people were like, oh, I guess I can just play an Appaloosa? Question mark. And it was bad. But yeah, um, so it's really annoying at locals at the moment, the amount of people that are playing Tenpai. I could side for it. Don't care to. Um, it was one yeah, the other day, now it's three. There was an even number of Tempai players to turn skip players. Yes. Yeah, Locals is a real fun time right now. I enjoyed it. What side of the table were you on? Not the Tempai side. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not enjoying Locals right now. But if it weren't for States, I'd just not go. But here we are. He'd go. He would still go. When's the last thing you missed the locals by choice? Like, mm. just going, I'm going to do something else. A month and a half ago, I went to a barbecue. December. December. It wasn't December. Yeah. No, I, mine was December. December. Before that, four years ago. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But anyway, we'll just wait to see what I play at Was States. the barbecue by choice, by the way? It was a family barbecue where you would have been pressured. Yeah. Go, like... It's not by choice. No, 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 it was one by choice. What about one where you're just like, I'm, I don't have an event that I can choose to go to instead. It's just like, I'm I just, just don't want to go to locals. That's the thing. Up until right now, even in the, like, the cringe formats, there has been like mm. a window that I would be happy to play in. Currently, I'm not seeing that window. The window is closed. I would argue that the deck you're, you have the ability to build right now is better than the decks that you have been playing in those formats. Yeah, but I enjoy those decks more. Okay. For the anyway. third time, I will attempt to transition to the news. Yes, speaking <laughs> of, we move to Master Duel first. Uh, so last week we had the uh, Skill Drain Extreme Duel. Now we've moved on to Double Summon. Did you uh, play the extreme, the skill, dan- skill, skill Drain Extreme Duel? Are you right? Do you want to try that one more time? No. 
Uh, as I mentioned on last week's episode, yes, yes, I did. Ah. I did my three and then I got the fuck out because that was boring. Oh, uh, and they had to do three? I still didn't want to do that. <laughs> I haven't played Master Duel in so long. I only just reset it onto my computer, so I'm like, I can get back into this. No, still haven't. We're about to get SP. You can own one there. <laughs> no. Actually, we're about to for Horus in there too. That is what made me reboot it and go, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so each player can normal summon twice is basically the, uh, think of this. Uh, what seems to be the most prevalent is people just, uh, normal summoning a labyrinth monster to search a labyrinth card and then normal summoning Ecclesia to search punishment. Uh, I thought you were going to say like a fucking barrier statue. I would have also thought that. Now, labyrinth need to special summon, so yeah. they can't completely lock you out. Uh, but yeah, they do their absolute best to make it very painful to play. There's surely some stun deck that is just going to abuse this completely. Oh, 100%. Like, percent like, Normal summon that one, was rescue the, card. Normal summon another one. Combo. That was just the variance of the deck that I saw. Like, there's absolutely people that went in there mm. and just set up, like, um, just cringe shit. Yeah. Normal summon border. Normal summon fossil liner. Pass? <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, I played Time Thieves. If you want to play Morganite, do you get a third normal summon? I think so. I think they stack. Because <laughs> you really need three floodgates on the board. Like, that's just. That's like, I was like, is it a case of normal double summon activates at the start of your turn, or is it a case of it you just have two normal summons? It's just two normal summons. Oh, they did the classic of, um, like, rather than just having, like, a thing to say that you have an extra normal summon, the art of double summon was right there. Okay. Okay. Where okay. right. the field Should be goes. Nightmare Goblin. That. No, please don't take us back to Ultimate that. Offering. New, new art. Yes, uh, that is a lovely segue. Thank you, Logan. Uh, so we got a <laughs> announcement. <laughs> oh, what's he thanks the you for the segue, even though I was the one that had the segue. I gave it the enough context that Jake was like, oh, that is something. <laughs> so he doesn't know what tab it's on anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's the one that wouldn't like Every week I tell him to organise the tabs. <laughs> I did organise the tabs. This one reset for some reason. I don't know why. By but the anyway, tab, uh, we got one. alt <laughs> uh, for Lost Art having been announced. Uh, keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, there it is. That one. I recognise because it has Toad. Uh, so That's the... a frog. But Toad. It's tree one frog. He's a toad. Frogs aren't toads. So, no, that's Otherwise, it'd make life so yeah. much easier. If you weren't born in the trees, he would have been a frog. No, it's if you're not printed in McDonald's pack, you're not a frog. Even then, you're still not a frog. So anyway, the Lost Arts. <laughs> yeah, Lost Arts. So, uh, tree-born frog slash toad. Um, what else we It's got? never been toad! It's the same. Uh, double trap hole. I don't, I don't know the if I've ever seen a card before. Oh, which card? Double trap hole. I like double trap hole. I don't think I've ever seen it. Surprise. Double trouble. Um, Sassy Golden Lord. I don't know. What did they censor out? Oh, this one has the giant dildo strapped to its chest. I was going to say, did he yeah. just have his cock out? Yeah. Um, ultimate Offering <laughs> and Ultimate Meat Offering. Both getting uh, alt arts. Uh, Exodia Necross. Uh, what Cancel. Where we get little electric zappy skeleton. Uh, and the Gimmick Puppet Dreary Doll. The only relevant one out of them all, but we probably will get that one last. Yeah, yeah more than likely, if we get it at all. I was supposed to ask today about whether or not the old ones we even got. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember when they used to have value? Yeah. I was just thinking, I was like, this is like actually an awful print of Lost Arts. They're just. Oh, this one's pretty good compared to the last one. They're just the one before. looking yeah. for cards to throw at it, and every time they make a new run, they become less and less of a thing that you care about. Don't when it was at was the, the very beginning, about. when it was just the Exodia pieces, the Monster Reborn and the Skill Drain, mm. that would have been perfect. If they'd left it there, you grab those, they would have been worth something. Now, you're going to have like 87 of these fucking things by the end of their print run, and no one's going to give a shit. Like, I understand it, because like, they're trying to give people who are collectors, like, oh, it's the other art, it's, it's the art that you want. But like... You, you can do this in a, a different way that I think would actually give it more excitement and value now. Because we're at the point where Lost Arts are just like, uh. Like, if yeah. you put them in, the, if you just slid like a Luminar Lights on Sorceress into the battle pack, we're like, actually surprised, this print, it's the different art Luminar. People would be like, oh, well now I'm going to, like, if I'm collecting, I'll buy the product. 
Ben's brought this up before is they can't put it in product because some of mm. them being that they are lewd artworks in Konami's mind. They yes. can't just be like, here, children, have it this uh, laundry this dragon made that has a nipple, not a button, but a nipple. I stand by my point. Just do something different then. Don't like promote it differently. What yeah. they actually need to do is just stop. Also true. If that was the case, I still would not want the, not the laundry dragon made all the time. Because it's a laundry dragon made and it should be burnt. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Laundry bad. True. Anyway. Anyway, uh, next bit of news. Uh, so in the OCG, they uh, announced the two alt arts that we're getting with the complete file story of white slash the Albaz law book. Uh, so we're getting alt arts of Aluba and of Blazing Cartesia. Hmm. Um, they look quite nice. Um, that one's a little bit like waifu baby kind of thing, but the Aluba looks really good. Yeah. 95% of like Yu-Gi-Oh that. players will buy it anyway because it's waifu. Well, 95% of Yu-Gi-Oh Yu players, players won't, won't be able to because it. it's an OCG exclusive product at this point. Oh, maybe point. that's 40% of Yu-Gi-Oh players have access to it. That's the Team thing. The I remember bringing it up when I discussed it the first time. It's 300 Australian dollars just to buy it. Anyway, so they're getting a $20 structure deck with Meta Staples. <laughs> oh, that's old news. I'm just saying that that's good, that's good value. Uh, next bit of news. Uh, here we go. Uh, so, an announcement for this year's uh, sort of World's Day that mm -hmm. they used to do has been made. Um, mm -hmm. So, OTS stores will be getting... Uh, what's this card called again? Uh, it's something city. Uh, Grandoy's uh, Turtle Sunderella. Um, you can get there it at your locals. Grandopolis, the Eternal Golden City. Uh, so, yeah, that's a 2013 price card rather than the current one for some reason. I like it. It does look nice. Oh, I, I rate it. It looks like a cool artwork. Um, the, but, the issue is that the... Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. But the good news is that they're actually doing something for Worlds at a yeah. locals level this year. Again. Because yeah, you, can't go to, to you can't go to watch Worlds. Yes. Unlike any other card game where you can go and have a great time. Mm. But you go, no, no. You sit at home and you watch. I don't understand why they're doing that. Like... They could make. They, they will allow local players to go. I know. They just don't want people flying from all over the country and fucking lining up to get in when they can make a point of being like, hey, anyone in the Seattle community, here is entry. Is that what it is? I thought it was. No, that's no, for anyone at, at any OTS. He's talking about I'm worlds. talking about actually going to worlds. But surely there is a, there is a level of. That you can make worlds an event. Where people around the world, I don't think it's a bad thing for people around the world to come and watch the best players play around the world and run an inside event, run events around it. How, why would you shoot yourself in the foot with so much opportunity? Because it's always been a, like a nichely invited thing. Yeah, it nichely invited to play, but they, every other card game has expanded that opportunity. Yeah, but like there's a lot more of an effort to qualify for Yu-Gi-Oh Worlds. Mm. Like other card games are like, oh, you sneezed? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I play Pokemon. <laughs> you know how to spell Pikachu? Here's your invite, buddy. Off you go. Unless you're playing in Australia. You, yeah, you live in Australia? Go fuck yourself, <laughs> buddy. You want to drive to Perth? No? It's so Fly to Perth? Maybe? It is Too wild. bad. <laughs> but then again, at least, you, at least if you're a Pokemon player in Australia, you can go watch Worlds live. Yes. True. That's the payoff. You can pay to be there instead. <laughs> yes, you can do what I did and fly there and then go, oh, you mean the line's four hours to get in because everyone is here? I'm going back to Tokyo. Well, Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! wouldn't get that level of turnout. Uh... Because at Pokemon, you have people that probably have no interest in the TCG, the VCG, um, Pokken, any of that bullshit. They're just there to get into the Pokemon Center to get the most exclusive shit that they can get their hands on. I would also argue that if it's outside Japan, you don't get that big of a number. Like, no. the fact I mean, that we'll Japan find out in August? It also would be yeah. a while. When it's in Hawaii? Yeah. It'll be way less in Hawaii. There'll be way less people in Hawaii. Yes, I wonder how percent. expensive the accommodation would be in Hawaii so at that time. Much, so much. Because I would imagine it's expensive at the best of times. And then it's in their summer still. I think it's towards the end of their summer. August, but it's yeah, still in their summer. summer. So it's going to be hella expensive. I'm really proud of you, Jake. What, knowing what seasons are? No. You didn't bring up the fact that half the island burned down. Well, that's brought a real Debbie Downer to the news, hasn't it? Yes. 
Um, I guess we move on to the next bit. We move. Uh, so we the move. next set, uh, side set, has been announced for the OCG. Uh, all we know so far is the name, and it is called the Crossover Breakers. Oh, yes. We're finally getting Crossover Crisis imported into Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. yes. I summoned Dexter. <laughs> no, Dexter's shit. <laughs> Uh, so this is releasing in the OCG on August 24. Um, so apparently we'll know in the next week or so. Maybe it's just crystals. Maybe like, oh, it didn't imagine. work as an online card game. Printed physical. Out it goes. But oh, it is saying tentative title, but realistically, they rarely change them. Not really. There's um, slight adjustments, but nothing really major. Uh, so apparently we're getting announcements of this in the next week or so from V-Jump and stuff as to what will be in there. Um, where do you think side sets are going? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, are they doing better than they usually? Yeah. Like deck build packs? Yeah. Or do you reckon they're going to pivot back to... Well, the duelist packs aren't that bad. Aren't they? They're better than what they were. They're still bad, though. Yeah, but remember if I can... The last duelist pack? Was that the Maker one? No, the, la- the that was the one that... The Maker one came after the last duelist pack. Yeah. The last duelist pack was the one where it was like... My the money card it? was like flight for a Daredevil and there was a Galaxy Eyes that was like 10 bucks. Jeez. That was a garbage set. Um, but we're probably just going to stick with deck build packs. Although mm. they haven't named this deck build pack, so that makes it concerning. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it called? Oh no, it is deck build. Oh, pack. deck build pack. Oh, there you go. Still deck build breakers. pack. We're fine. Mm-hmm. They'll just give us three, set, three different decks, and oh, we go. Did... The issue I'm... is that our printings are so shit. Yes. Yeah. Our printings being the fifteen ultras, mm. ten ultras. I remember you get you eleven of which being you for the best archetype. Yeah. 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 That best archetype. So, I mean, oh, you yes. look, you look back on it. Centurion got the most. It was the best. Yep. Uh, Vanquish Soul got the most. It was the best. It was the best. The others just were phenomenally shit, though. I can't even remember what the but third the one set was. With, um, in the set with Centurion, the other ones are getting some more support. Soft yeah, but Centurion's or, also getting support. Like yeah, but isn't the support for the other ones like, real good? You had Amazing uh, Defenders. Conceptually, yes. Amazing Defenders is insane. Yeah. Hmm? We had Amazing Defenders before that. Best set ever printed. Not again. according to our 2023. Uh, Still disappointed in you all for that. Oh, won that again. Especially you. Uh, Rarity Collection. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Which Fair is funny because, again, listening back to the pod, Ben was super excited for it until it released, and he's like, I hate this set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. you. Yeah. Because it released, and it was just. He did so the same with Light Swan. I mean, not Light Swan, the other one, Tier Element. Super excited to play Tier Elements, started playing Tier no, Elements, like, I fucking Sprite. hate this deck. No, I was Sprite. Sprite. Yeah. No, we started on Tier. You we were... very quickly pivoted. He pivoted very quickly onto Sprite. Yeah, I was... Because I remember testing, he was Sprite. And I, I loved Tier Element. I was so in on that. I hate Tier Elements so much. Yeah, I love Tier. Bring it back. We've seen. You're, you are. You're doing it right now. <laughs> what did you play today, Jake? Yeah. Bring it back when there are three. <laughs> he played <laughs> Light Consistency. He, he played Light Swan today. That's why he didn't win. He didn't have pure Tier. Yeah. That's Just, his strategy. Play pure tier. Make that deck even better. Is that not just taking out the last one cards and putting in hand traps? Yes. No. What other tier cards do you have to go in your deck? Uh, more traps. Um, yeah, Mally. Um, the Unchained thing, so I can pop the Bricky trap that I've inevitably drawn. No. Oh, yeah. Surprised he didn't just play Mally anyway in this list I was at the very beginning uh, but it was bad yeah he kept drawing it mm. that's the breaks anyway uh, moving on to some news if you weren't aware we do have a uh, news Discord. we have a news section right sorry Discord. Yeah. yeah sorry it's right down there questions we move on to questions if you weren't aware link will be in the description below feel free to jump in say hi and ask us some questions hi our first one this week will come to us oh Jesus Christ First one this week comes to us from Rai Guy. Hi, Rai Guy. I'm uh, reading uh, Rush Doll News. Oh, Christ. Uh, with all the different types of Yu Gi Tube content being made, do you think there are any untapped markets in Yu Gi Oh content creation? Alternative- English speaking Rush Dolls. Alternatively, do you think it'll reach a point where the current type of content goes stale? I think there's a lot of diversity at the moment. 
like that exists. Like you've got MBT for people that are brain dead. Um, <coughs> you've got uh, your far for people that want things that don't really take itself too seriously, mm -hmm. uh, but realize that MBT is brain dead. Um, you've got uh, the guy who just commentates over DB uh, grinder. Yeah, your DB grinder. The guy who if you're Josh really annoys me, but it's Josh and uh, it's still not MBT, so it's, I'd still put him up. At least not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wasn't aware in the show notes that we said just shit on um, <laughs> fucking MBT for 20 minutes. You've got that guy that does the weird hand trap videos. I haven't mm. watched a single one of his other videos, but I watch every weird hand trap video. There is a lot of variety. Like I yeah. agree, there is some real, there is some real heavy casual um, YouTubers. Like we're not told we don't mention those people. They're really bad. We and don't mention got, like, those the, people. The next up is like MBT, who's still really bad. I don't know if uh, I'd rather watch MBT <laughs> or those two people eyes whose names ever enacted. <laughs> Um, you mean the ones you mentioned like just last week? <laughs> yeah, I think I think what actually <laughs> what actually might be the best day of the year YouTubing scene right now is actually like the fact we're getting a lot more competitive players dying to give content. Yes, like Joshua Smith and Jesse Cotton, even though their content can be a bit um, clickbaity. We had this conversation last um, week. We had a similar best. conversation last week. Yeah, uh, the reason why you're thinking similar is because of the point that I'm about to bring up in that. They only show you what they want you to see. Of course, of course. I'm not saying that they're giving you the best thing ever, but I'm saying that like just if you, if you watch one just cotton video, that is still better than 85 MBT oh, yeah. videos. Like, and he does um, genuinely put out videos that are like, this will just make you a 25% better player. Yeah. And if anyone's improving at all, that's great. And the reality is, 95% of the people who watch his videos. You're not going to beat Jesse Cotton 95% of the time anyway. Yeah. You're just getting better for locals. He's just not going to give you like the deck techs that are going to put you yeah. to their level. And then I think the other side of that is you're seeing a lot more like behind the scenes. Like, here, I'm going to this event and this is what we're doing. You're actually getting a bit more of a like understanding of what it looks like. If you've never gone to a YCS, what does it look like to go to an event? Jesse Cotton does that. Um, I think Joshua Smith does good videos. I think there are some bloody horrendous YouTubers out there. Um, I think there's some who just don't care about their content. Um, <laughs> that was the time when I put effort in. And and here you are. <laughs> Those were the good days. You bought lapel marks. You, you put some effort in. Yeah, but you don't see me editing. <laughs> anyway, I think I think. I remember we used to get cold opens. I think this yeah, was. Those used to take me an hour just to find, and I barely have like any time to get this done as it is. Do you remember when you used to have like your introduction and you'd get like a little comment under your name? You still I do. Think that still you still get that? You still oh, get that. Damn, that's yeah. great. Being that uh, you've called him out, there's going to be a very uh, specific very one, one for you. Love and read King <laughs> Um I think, yeah, anyway, the answer is question, I think we are in a much better position now than we were, say, four years ago when we were probably at the, the valley of Yugi tubing, which was everything is casual based. Even Team Samurai X1, like, I his think content has gotten so much better. He, he's gotten so much better. I, I kind of stopped watching once I got good at the game. Well, that's it. Like, I think I only really bounced back to Sam like a couple of months ago, but I was like, oh, I'm actually enjoying your content more now because you're taking it a bit more seriously. And you know your, you know, he knew his market. He got big enough off the casual scene to then be able to go and partner with people like Jesse Cotton and go, let's make good content. There's... That also the fact that he topped that YCS like years ago made him yeah. actually gave him. He was like fucking True Draco. It was like twenty eighteen. We also played it Dino in the remote duels. He won the Dino with Dinos in that remote duel event. Yeah, but yeah, he, like, yeah. Jesse Cotton, Josh Smith, even Sam, Pack, uh, MST TV. <sighs> like I think those are still probably the best ones you can watch if you're wanting competitive side content, and if you want to just muck around and don't really care about the seriousness of it. Far, far and Sam are all your funny ones, and then the rest are just hot garbage. I've watched no, I, haven't, a CMO video I haven't even heard of still, Simo in he, so He long. makes content similar to Far, far now. Like, he does not put any effort in. I I did notice a while the a while back a lot of the, like the like Team Sam and the others just started doing content that was more. It was very similar to content that Magic YouTubers put out. Yeah, where it's like I'm hanging out with some guys and we're playing cards. Look how funny this is, mm. and it's like. It doesn't really hold up in Yu-Gi-Oh. No. Because Magic is built on, like, you've got Commander and stuff where you can play multiplayer You say and stuff. Things. You have Commander. So? You, you say Commander and stuff. It's just Commander. You've got 7 point? You've got... No, no, no. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it, like, 
You know, like YouTube, um, magic YouTube content is just, just commander, commander and people calling out cheaters in other formats. <laughs> that is all of magic YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, they have market watch people, I think, probably. Although they're market. Oh yeah, actually, so guys. we should talk. M Cough Boy is probably putting out some. No, we don't mention that, that, like that anymore. Never the, the, the racism stuff. Did I miss something in those like three years I went away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about it in a second. Yeah. Anyway, um. Yeah, there Passing is champs a whole is good for raft of content for a whole different demographics. Like, you, if you go on TikTok, you can just find people that just crack packs if that's your thing as well. Ah, yes, you can find the people that took over from Simply Unlucky. Do you still do content? No, he got cancelled, didn't he? I know he got cancelled, but did that kill him? I mean, Not he... literally kill him. I mean, like, kill his channel. Anyway, while you oh, search that, okay. <laughs> um, the next question comes from, from 6R6. Uh, how do you go about quite, or how did you go about acquiring staples? Did you focus on acquiring all of them at first? Did you buy them as required for a deck that used a particular one? And at what point in your Yu-Gi-Oh journey were you able to move from decks, uh, deck to deck without buying the staples? Oh, you mean like more buying more staple cards? It's been a while since I've had to buy a staple. I typically now just buy it when it comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, the specific point in time when I ticked over from needing to constantly like oh i kind of need this hand trap too i'm just gonna buy every fucking hand trap was when they released uh ash blossom and shining victories not shining victories the other one that was the shiv set um shadows in valhalla mm. when oh, they released yeah. ash blossom there that was the point in time where i was like okay from this point out i will just buy every hand trap that was the first reprint set for ash blossom this is the second reprint second reprint but the I first remember... reprint was hilariously yeah, short printed it was so yes bad yeah, I Even remember... Even Ash Blossom in that set was one per box where it was a super rare and you got four super rares per pack. That uh -huh. was so bad. I remember... Oh, God. Every time that Ash was getting reprinted in those early days, everyone was like, this is it. This is this where is the Ash one. becomes cheap. <laughs> this, everyone can have it. Oh. I bought one box and tried to get a play set, got one and was like, oh, at least it's only 25 bucks each now. <laughs> Buy the rest. Yeah. But that was the point. Like, once I actually had Ash Blossom and was, like, using it every time... Then I was like, fuck, I've got to buy all of these hand traps, man. Like, there's just no not doing that. I think it's, yeah, when you realize you just, hand traps are so valuable in the game now. Whenever a new one comes out, you just need to be prepared. You're going to drop a couple hundred on that. Because yeah, they're going to get more value. You're going to get more mileage out of those than you will the deck core that you probably need to be buying. Yeah. Yes. But if you're coming into it, like if you're jumping in, I would say the best strategy is pick them up on the like when they come out. But if you're jumping in and you need a bunch of the old hand traps, Buy the cheapest ones you can to yeah. just have them because you'll need them. Yeah. And then you can slowly acquire better ones. And then when you have your better ones, you can either flip the bad ones because people will still want to buy them or you can have the spares. Like, I think that's the best way. Just don't buy no material on day one. Yeah, maybe don't do that. Sometimes you make... <laughs> sometimes sometimes the game gets wrong, all right? Sometimes you gamble and you lose. That right? was the time when I was like, it's a hand trap printed in a May, in a May set. It's insane. <laughs> it's got to be good. <laughs> it's insane. In theory, I, I, think I think I resolved that card once, and I paid two hundred dollars for the playset. That's an expensive resolution you got there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you win the game by resolving it? Though? No. I, only, I legitimately only put it in my deck because I was like, I've spent so much fucking money on this. It has to be done. I have to use it. Like, <laughs> and then I played it for a locals and was like, this is so garbage. Oh, oh my, my god. Gosh. <laughs> oh god. Um. But yeah, the main thing with staples and hand traps and all that kind of thing is don't sell them. Yes. Unless you've got an upgraded rarity, do not sell them because it becomes quite expensive flipping between staple to staple from format to format. Just keep them in a binder. If you don't use them, it's fine. I mean, if you're selling out, it's different. <laughs> he doesn't even know where his imperms are. The here, aren't they? Yeah, I have them. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I knew. I don't know what rarity they were though. I've forgotten that. It's like a gold and two commons or two supers or something. Yeah, see, I got three. I got three commons anyway. It's fine. <laughs> see, just have just have enough impact that you don't need to know where they are. Simple. <laughs> I, I have a dedicated part of my desk that's the, the ten cards that Logan has, and every time I try to give them to him, he just goes, "Oh, don't worry about it. I'll get them later." So there's literally just a portion of my desk that is just ten cards sitting right there. That are, these are the Logan cards. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then last question again comes to us from 6R6. What has been your longest work week and why? Work week? Longest work yeah. week. That's big work weeks. Personal. Like, sometimes, so for context, I sometimes work with, like, overseas teams. 
And like there's, I'm just about to start doing that again. So I'm about to start having some long work weeks. Um, so like probably like a year ago, I was causing like a big deal at work. So it was like having to stay up till I like when you do... say the words closing a big deal, you need to have like a cigar like hanging out. Oh, yes, I was like, closing, closing a big deal, see? <laughs> closing a big deal. So... <laughs> it was like, I'd, I start work at like 8 in the morning and I was having to stay back to like 8 p.m. So I was doing like 12 hour days every day. That's probably it. Yep. <laughs> Don't know what you said, mate, but I agree. Um, no, no, he, he's working 12 hour days. 60 hour week. Oh, yeah. I think, I think the hardest work weeks, <laughs> like, my my profession is equally like your weeks that are so crudy and then you get weeks that are so like hectic um probably the hectic the most hectic times is when you're taking the like the youth away on like camps and so you don't give too much context into what you do you do like seven day seven day camps where you're doing 24 hours of hanging out with people like hundreds of kids that sounds like a fucking nightmare yeah Um, you come back and you like you get time in lieu but it's you take that time off when we tell you and say welcome back on day one and back to work uh, and that's no, pain. i'm not about that yeah um my longer weeks uh i feel like i'm about to get into them now um we had a period where um our team had nothing to do for the saturday so i had the last two saturdays off which has been very lovely uh but now that we've shot a bunch of stuff to launch well now um <laughs> It's going to be a busy week of phone calls and running around and then working on Saturday again. Uh, yeah. Go any houses you want to plug while we're here? <laughs> no, 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 they'll, they'll solve themselves. Um, but that concludes us for this week. Uh, thank you all very much for listening and watching. If you are watching along, feel free to like and subscribe. If you're listening, feel free to favourite. Jump into Discord, ask us some questions, and we'll catch you all next week. Peace. <laughs>